All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about these. Um, so we've got a craft toy wagon that are made to sell at a craft fair. It takes four hours to make a small wagon. So again, when we read these word problems, if you don't write something down, that's going to be a problem for you later on. Okay, so make sure that you're writing notes as you're reading these word problems. I got to move this one. Okay. So it says four hours to make a small wagon. So X is representing the small, right? And it takes four hours to do that guy, all right? And then six hours to make a large wagon. So we got Y equals large, and it's gonna take six hours to do that, okay? The craft booth owner has no more than 60 hours available to make the wagon and have at least six small wagons to sell. So we've gotta have at least six wagons right so that's greater than six now they said that whole thing about 60 hours available okay so it takes four to hours to make a small one it takes six hours to make a large one and we can't spend more than 60 hours okay so this is the little line system of inequalities right here that means that our solution, if we graph both of these inequalities, that means our solution lies within here. Okay, so this question is asking us, what is a possible combination given the constraints of the situation? So you would pick some point in here that is a whole number. For instance, I would pick like eight comma two. That's like right here, right? So if I plugged in eight, I would get this if i plugged in two i would get that so four times eight is 32 six times two is 12 32 plus 12 is going to give me 44 is 44 less than 60 yeah so that would be a possible solution so eight small wagons and two large now what you could have done is you could have picked any other point that's inside that little pink purple region Okay, so if you pick something else, that's totally fine too. Questions on this? Yeah. Um, so I know that it has to be greater than six. So it has to be on this side of six. And I know that it has to be less than 60. So less than 60 is this line. You, you could have picked any other point. Like, let's say you picked, um, 12 one yeah that's fine if you 12 one that's inside there um debbie grace also i would just plot it in desmos and then you can see the shaded region okay okay i'm gonna go ahead and move down smallest are you talking about a different problem the small wagon and then the large wagon. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at number two. It says a baker is selling two types of donuts, glazed donuts, which is G. Okay, so glazed donuts, which is G. And jelly donuts, which is J. Customer wants to buy no more than 13 donuts. So 13 donuts is the cap, okay? And wants to try at least two of each kind. So we know that we've got to have at least two of G and at least two of J. What would be the constraints that represent how many donuts the customer can buy? So I would have G plus J and it's going to be no more than 13. Okay. So notice how as I'm reading these paragraphs, I'm writing down notes and I'm going ahead and writing out the constraints. They didn't ask me to do it until the very end, but I'm going ahead and writing it before I even read that statement. Any questions on how I got this one? Yep. Uh, 
That's a good question. So he asked, um, how do you know if it's greater than or less than? So by no more than, no more than means it would have to be less than that 13, right? And then the word, I think it's at least, means that it's going to be greater than. Yeah. Um, remember the alligator eats the bigger number. So let's say, yeah. Um, so let's say you, you could also memorize it this way, but your X has to be on this side of it in order to memorize this. But the alligator always eats the bigger number. So for instance, three is greater than two, right? Okay, what about this one? Which way should it face? Should it face left or should it face right to make this statement true? Good. So two, how I read this is two is less than four. Good. This right here is three is greater than two. That makes sense? Okay. Good question. So four is greater than two. Yep. I'm writing all these numbers all over the place. Okay. But again, you can memorize this and then you don't have any problems. Okay. All right. So it says Billy is using this function 1.89x plus 2.89y to minimize his expenses when selling markers and erasers. He has the following constraints. What is the minimum value of E? So the best way to do this one is probably go ahead and plug it into Desmos. So I would come in here. Get a graphic calculator. And I would do these four. Okay, so I got 3x plus y is greater than or equal to 5. 3x plus y is greater than or equal to 5. And then I've got x plus y is greater than or equal to 4. x plus y is greater than or equal to four. Okay, the other two constraints say x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero. So I'm really just focusing on this first quadrant right here, right? Oh, thank you. Okay, so what we're looking at for our solutions is this dark purple region, okay? Keep in mind your solution is where those two colors actually overlap. So if I mix like red and blue, I'm gonna get purple, right? So that's where this little shaded region is. All right, now it asks, what is the minimum value of E, okay? So when we're given this graph, the corners of the graph are going to be either our maximized profit or our minimized expenses, okay? So what I mean by that is you see how this line this line right here intersects this y equals zero. Okay, so that's gonna be one of our potential solutions. This line right here, that's four comma zero, that's gonna be a potential solution. So I'm gonna write these two things down. So I've got, I'm gonna write right here. Ooh, nope. Four comma zero and zero comma five. And then do you see where it's intersecting right here? This point right here? That's 0 0.5 comma 3.5, right? Okay, so again, we're trying to minimize our expenses. So back over here on our review guide, we've got this little equation that represents our expenses. Okay, so 1.89X plus 2.89Y. We're trying to minimize our expenses so what we're gonna do is take these three points that we have and we're gonna use the equation to plug them in. So I'm gonna plug in the first one. And that gets me 7.56, right? Okay. 
the next one when I plug it in. I get 14.45. Okay, so which one's smaller so far? The first one. Okay. And then I'm going to plug in that last one. And that's 11.06. What's the smallest one? The first one. So what would minimize our expenses? It would be this first one. But what it asks for is what is the minimum value? Well, our minimum value is 7.56. Okay, so coming back over here, our minimum value is 7.56, and that's in dollars. Can you yep. Uh... So again, how I got these like three points, hey, babe is every every one of these little like corners of intersection are going to be a potential for either the minimize or maximize profit or expenses. Does that make Okay, you good, babe? Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next one. It says, does the following system of equation have a solution? How do you know? Okay, so what you're going to do is just plug these two equations into Desmos and see where they cross over. Okay? So I'm going to go into Desmos. I'm going to type these equations in. Um, please be mindful, you have to type them incorrectly in order to get the right answer. If you don't type them incorrectly, guess what? Wrong answer. Exactly. Exhibit A. And then ln of x plus 7 plus 4. ln of x plus 7. Okay, we're going to zoom out. Does this system have solutions? Yes. yes. Where are those solutions? It's where they intersect, right? Okay. If I were asking you to find the system of equations with one solution, how many times should that those two functions intersect? One time. Okay, so please be mindful when you're reading if it's asking for one solution or it's asking you for how, uh, what are the solutions? Okay, be, be specific in your reading. So this would be negative 1.771 and 1.679. So again, what I would write right here is negative 1.771 and 1.679. That'd be x equals that, comma, that. Remember, with our systems for equations, you're not going to write the x and the y. You're just going to write the x on this one. I got a lot of questions on this next one, the smallest solution. OK, so what you're going to do on this next one is you're going to graph both of those equations, OK? We're going to go in there, ln of x plus 2 minus 6, ln of x plus 2 minus 6, and then the other one is x cubed minus 10x plus 7, x cubed minus 10x plus 7. All right. So what they're asking for here. Move down a bit. is what is the smallest solution? Well, how many times does this guy cross? Twice, right? So it crosses over twice. So we got a point right here and a point right here. 
What is the smaller x value? That 1.536, right? Okay, that is your smallest solution. All right, so coming in here, 1.536. It's the smaller x value. That's really what they're asking you to do. Okay. And I know I'm moving quickly. I will post this video once I finish. All right, number eight, a manufacturer produces pencils and pens. Let X represent the number of pencil produced in an hour. So X, nope, uh, that's fine. Let X represent the pencils and Y represent the pens, okay? And then they give us these inequalities that we have to use. And then they give us a profit function. Okay, so they give us constraints and then they give us a profit function. You're going to take the constraints and you're gonna graph them first. Okay, because we are trying to maximize the profit. With me? Okay, so we're gonna take these and plug them into Desmos. So X plus Y is less than or equal to nine. So we're gonna come in here. We got X plus Y is less than or equal to nine, and then we've got x plus two y is less than or equal to 10. x plus two y is less than or equal to, oh wow, okay. All right, now we're trying to maximize our profit. And remember, it said greater than zero for our x and our y. So we're only looking at the first quadrant. I never graph those because it's too many shaded regions over each other, okay? So remember what I told you in the last problem that we did with one of these? Any of these little like corner pieces, that's where we're either going to maximize or minimize our expenses. So we've got nine comma zero, eight comma one, or zero comma five. So I'm gonna write those three down on my paper. So we've got zero comma five. Uh, I think I said eight comma one. Yep, and nine comma zero. Okay, so eight comma one and nine comma zero. All right, so we're gonna take each one of these points and we're going to plug it into our maximized profit equation. Okay. And some blank stairs make me nervous. Okay, so I'm going to take my equation, which was 25x plus 40y. I'm going to take all three of those points and plug it in. So 25x, which is zero, plus 40 times five. That gives me 200. Okay, let's look at the next one. 25 times eight plus uh, 40 times one, that gives me 240. So that's bigger, right? And then the last one, 25 times nine plus 40 times zero. That's 225. So which one is the largest one? The eight comma one, right? So determine the given, um, and the constraints given to determine the maximum profit. So what's the maximum profit for this one? 240 bucks. Now you have a graph on your paper, so you can just draw like a rough sketch of this if you need to. Um, so I'm gonna take a second and let you finish writing that down. Here's your Desmos what it looks like. And again, your solution is that dark shaded region.
All right, this is the one I love you guys, but y'all always mess up. Explain how to determine the solutions of any two function f of x and g of x, where f of x equals g of x from the graph. What is that asking you to do? How do we determine the function of two equations? It's where they intersect, right? Okay, so we're going to say on a graph where two lines intersect, there is a solution. So if you talk about intersecting and there being a solution, boom, there it is. Okay. You could also talk about how it works for both of the equations if you want to do that. But really, I'm looking for the word intersect, and then there's a solution. All right, last one. Let's do it. OK, determine the solutions to f of x and g of x in the given graph below. Okay, so Faith, I think you asked me this question earlier. So where they intersect are right here and right here. So that's four comma negative one right here. And negative one comma four. So what are my solutions? Well, X is going to equal negative one and four. Don't tell me the points. If you tell me the points, you're gonna be taken off. You've got to tell me x equals this and this. Um, because your y values is your f of x and g of x. Like it's the equation. You're telling me what what do I need to plug in in order to get that to work? Yeah. Okay. So really quick on the last sheet, I did this little thing where. Um, one, remember you have your performance final on Friday, and I'm so sorry that that's this week. It's just where it fell. Um, you still have a unit seven to take. I'm reminding you of that because everybody always asks me, what can I do for my grade? Well, you're not done with your grade yet. Um, my question to you is how many NTIs do you currently have in the grade book? Have you looked at that? Have you filled out the, what do it, what did I miss Google form? What's your current grade in the class? What's your goal by the end of the semester? Now, if your goal is by the end of the semester to have an A, but you got like a 15 because you got like 80 NTIs, that's not realistic. Okay? So I want you to actually put what your goal is. Instead of grade. What is the X? So we're going to on Friday. No, you're taking this test on Wednesday. On Friday, you're taking my Unit six is tomorrow. Performance final is on Friday. No, it's not shaded. It's not an inequality. Yeah. Sorry, I said yes too quickly on that. The X 